Welcome to the Call of Cinema and hope you guys are having a fantastic night and enjoying the first day of your Criterion sale. I'm all sweaty and my hair is all over the place, but hey, welcome. And thank you for joining me tonight because I know there's lots of crazy, kind of cool, kooky stuff you can be doing on, on a Friday night that's not here with me. But tonight I'm uh, kind of like doing a couple different things that I had planned. Uh, first off, if you're doing the Criterion sale and you have yet to check out, like, uh, hey there, Amy, either the Just of This podcast on the Criterion sale or uh, stuff from either Cubic Lover or, uh, or Desky, uh, whose name I'm, I'm going to get around again, uh, or, uh, or Logan Toxic, who's the man who rocks it with this stuff, definitely check their stuff out because they are pretty much kings of this stuff. I'm here to talk to you tonight about some other stuff. I was actually asked by uh, a good friend of the channel, a good friend of mine here, to be on a podcast coming up in the uh, near future, on a gothic horror podcast. And uh, we have like a uh, Hammer film planned for that one. Hey there, Alan. So within this here, I said, let's talk Hammer. Hey, I just mentioned you, Kubrick Lover. I just shouted you out. And... Uh, so the, the podcast, by the way, is called Cobwebs, a gothic horror podcast. If you haven't checked it out, do so. It's actually really good. And if you're a fan of Serial at Midnight, who you guys know, uh, I'm a, a big fan of, and he's a great guy that I've been on his show as well, Hey There Dungeon, uh, then you might want to check it out because he was actually on, a, uh, on an episode of the, uh, of the Cobwebs podcast as well. So that was actually that was a really good one too. So got to get that out of the way. Shilling other people's stuff. That's what I do. I'm better at shilling other people's stuff than I am at shilling mine. But speaking of shilling, because, you know, seamless segue. Uh, again, I want to shout out at the beginning of the channel my patrons, uh, Action Jackman, Brent, Brian, Dale, hey there, Griff, uh, Dr. Mark, Mad Scientist, JR, both of the Ryans, and Shadow Price, because without you guys, I don't know if I could get this, uh, these videos done and uh, get as many done as I can on time because especially right now, now has been a really hard time. Um, and I will say I will give a big shout out to also as well to my fantastic uh, people that support me on the Super Chats as well. You guys are awesome. Um, now, we're going to get right into this. We get, because I... Uh, I got a few to show you guys. So this is far from my entire Arrow collection or uh, not even my entire Mondo collection uh, or, or Hammer, but it's a, a good representation of either Alan of all three of those. So I thought it'd be fun to, uh, to keep mixing it up, to keep like doing a lot of different stuff. And that's what I wanted to do tonight. So I'm eventually we'll, we'll go through my entire collection with this stuff, but uh, some things are going to definitely stand out more than another. So here, here's where we go. Here's where that fork in the road is again, and this is where you decide. Uh, <laughs> I can't buy anything, Criterion, so I'm totally broke right now. <laughs> I, uh, I, I can't even buy the Mondo stuff. Oh, yes, let me just go start out right there, uh, because I know everybody is going to know the Criterion sale, Criterion sale is going on right now. Um, but one thing I did want to, uh, hopefully I can get my phone to work tonight. Because, uh, as you guys know, last time it was hard for me to actually get to my, uh, to get to my phone. So, right now, there is two new limited editions from Mondo. Uh, and uh, it is Seven Women for Satan, which actually had, a, actually had an earlier DVD edition, but this is actually, hey there, Dr. Mark, welcome, man. Thank you so much, by the way. Um, Seven Women from Satan, which has got the new limited edition red case with this with a with a booklet and reversible artwork and and postcards as well and uh, there's also sins of the flesh which uh, again has a reversible artwork i don't know how much the dvd version is worth the new should be totally honest with you and by the way i, I gotta contact you soon because we got to work on what we're going to do the new by the way we are doing a collaboration video and the reason it's taking so long is because i am a procrastinator uh, that and uh, like been because yeah, it's been a crazy, crazy, crazy time at work right now. We had a big sale going on in the company that I work for, and that's caused a lot more uh, stuff 
than I uh, going on than I than regularly, and it's I've been super stressed. So you guys are actually really good for this stuff. So this is, and you're not gonna see it on my phone, but this is Seven Women of Satan, and this is Sins of the Flesh. Both of them have fantastic covers. I really want both of those. I can't afford to get either one. It's a bit of a bummer, but hey, that's life, right? So let's open up the YouTube thing. And here's where you, you guys, here's your choose your own adventure portion of this video, which happens at the beginning of all of these videos. You, I, we can start with Arrow. We can start with Mondo. We can start with Hammer. There's three forks to that road. Which, which one do you guys want to go with first? Hey there, Dave. So I'm going to wait for somebody to answer because arrow first. Okay. <laughs> we got an arrow and a mondo. We got two arrows, so we'll do arrow first. Don't worry, Zanuj. We'll do mondo too. Uh, so we're uh, w now not like a bunch of arrow, but we, we got a few here. I picked regular arrow and as opposed to my box sets and stuff like that because uh, I want to do that one in a separate video. But let's start here with some of the arrow stuff. And we will go from there on to the manual stuff. And then we'll go to the hammer stuff as well, which I'm actually very excited to talk about. Because when I said I brought my hammer down, I meant I brought in my big box sets of hammers as well, including the now rare cu hammer cube that everyone knows about. All right. <clears throat> so first up is a, uh, it's a cool one. It's a, how would you put this one? A, a Yakuza film. Perversion Story is actually really good. Actually, that, that one's upstairs. Uh, I do have the Perversion Story. It's actually a good film. Uh, this is Retaliation. And again, Arrow does great packaging on their stuff. Uh, there was like a, uh, you know, a postcard from Massacre Gun on the inside. And the book for Retaliation, I love the, the look of the book. That is Japanese. <clears throat> AME will, know, will probably know this one. I knew you'd know it, man. Uh, great one. Again, this is limited edition of 3,000 copies. I think there's actually still ones available for uh, for this one, which is sad because it's actually a good film. <clears throat> Going from from a Yakuza right into black exploitation, and we got JD's Revenge, which is a really good film. It stars Glenn Turman, and of course it has I think it's Louis Gossett in this one as well, right? I'm, am I wrong? Uh, no, it does a Louis Gossett Jr. Uh, really good film. Oh yeah, the day, the Warner Archive one, unfortunately, I can't do because it's not Canadian. You can only, it's, that's a U.S. only sale. And I actually spoke to them about it during the last four for 44 sale. And they said that because of like rights issues, you can't like sell them here in Canada. Hey there, Bill. Oh, the Suzuki box sets I really want too. And those are, are aren't those at a print now? But this one is excellent. If you don't, if you like black exploitation at all, and, and this is actually a really good one. Basically it's this guy and he's a young student. And he gets possessed by this uh, by this pimp named JD, who uh, wants his revenge. Later on, there would be a film put out called Hollywood Shuffle, that will kind of parody uh, the uh, JD's revenge a, a bit in its uh, in, in kind of one of its uh, big sequences that went throughout the film, where uh, Robert Townsend has to act in this movie where, where he plays a gangster, and. Uh, if you've never seen Hollywood Shuffle, uh, I personally don't own it yet, but I need to. And uh, it's a great film. Hey there, Craig. We're doing Arrow first, then we're going to do some Mondo, then we're going to do some Hammer. And Hammer's going to be a really cool one because it's got box sets galore there. Uh, people are underestimating the Hammer, th hammer thing, but uh, they shouldn't. Next up is another black exploitation that's Foxy Brown, Pam, Pam Greer. And again, this is my favorite Pam Greer film. I, uh, you know, Foxy Brown, uh, no, it's not actually. Coffee's my favorite one. That's a lie. But this is my second favorite one. Actually, I have seen Meteor Man. I have the olive edition of that. Pam Grew is super hot. I remember Pam Grew when she was on like uh, Miami Vice too. She was on that, on a few ones of that. So here is Black Mama, White Mama. Way, way better than, uh, than I expected it to be. And uh, way different than I expected. Now, now, I won't say better, but it's different. It has a very different, very kind of like darker, uh, more definitely more vanillistic tone than I than I expected. 
but uh utterly adore this film if you haven't seen this one if you pass it by because you think maybe it's just a, a defiant ones rip off with, with with a gender switch it's not uh not at all actually it's very different than that and uh, it's a very good film next up is my actual favorite uh black exploitation uh pam career film and and the one in my opinion that she looks the hottest for sure and that is coffee so if you've never seen coffee damn this is pam greer at her finest uh she's kicking butt she oh amy man she's like super hot and the plot's good in this one too as well and this one has a uh, does that have yeah sid hags on this one here uh, J uh alan arbus a great cast william elliott it's coffee drink coffee I don't know if she has time to drink coffee, man. She's just kicking too much butt because after all, she's the baddest one chick hit squad that ever hit town. There you go, see? I switched the art around. The original art for Arrow's coffee is this right here. But I like the old school 70s style po poster art better, so I, uh, I went with that. Next up is the classic and I gotta put this out there right now. This is the original version of this. I kinda knew you would. Uh, I knew you liked the inside out work better. Uh, this is the original one of this. This one was re-released afterwards. This one cost my better half a ton of money to get for me because at the time there was only gonna be a thousand copies of this one made. So this is, thank you Aniko. Thank you so much by the way. And I love that sticker, that is so awesome. I love the stickers. Those are so cool. This is my first time I've got a sticker one show up on mine. So this is How Comes a Frogtown, and it looks just like the other How Comes a Frogtown, right? The one from uh, the other one that they put out. But hold on. This one has the booklet, which doesn't come, in the uh, in the other one. So this is the rare. Yep, someone with Roddy Piper. You see him right there. One of the greatest Canadian wrestlers of all time, in my opinion. Now, I know Vinegar Shunham did a really sexy edition of this one as well. And now, there were sequels of this one without Roddy Piper in it, uh, which you can actually track down. Hey there, Mark. But uh, I actually dig this. I wasn't quite keen on the artwork originally, but it's kind of grown on me. Oh yeah, Roddy's Canadian. Uh, a lot of people don't actually. People think, uh, like, assume he's either from the U.S. or like he actually is from like, uh, you know, he's actually Irish or Scottish. But no, uh, he's uh, he's he's from Canada. Much I like a lot of them. Like uh, like the you, when you see like the evil Russian or some usually Canadian as well. Or when Mohammed Hussein, remember that guy? Yeah, he's also like he's from Ontario. Uh, yeah, we we play a lot of foreigners in wrestling. <laughs> All right, next up is Mary Baba's Black Sunday. I think he's from, is he from Toronto? Yeah, I'd have to look. But, uh, but yeah, one of my great prides when I was growing up, because I was a wrestling fan, was knowing that Roddy Parker was Canadian. Fantastic Mary Bad film. This is a very much of a gothic uh, film. And uh, what's really neat about this edition is uh, that it has the Italian's first sound horror film, the one that was directed by Ricardo Fridi, uh, I, Vamp I, I Vampiri, on here as well. So it has two, uh, it has two films on here. And if you've only seen Black Sunday, uh, definitely check out the other film as well. It was actually much like a, other some other Ricardo Fridi films. Ricardo Fridi started directing it, and like Marababa directed part of it as well. That's kind of what happened with some, you know, it's kind of like Kalatiki, if you understand that. But Kalatiki was more like Bavo was doing like the the shots, like the basically the the effect shots. But in uh, in that one, I think like Freedy just got probably bored and uh, walked off. Not a not a really uh, unusual thing for Freedy to do. The, that's that's actually the truth. Okay, an excellent excellent Jello and a very different one, uh, and one of the most beautiful covers. Uh, that's a different Black Sunday, but there is a Black Sunday with Bruce Dern with the blimp. So yeah, you're not incorrect with that. It's just a, a different realm. This is the Italian one. It's much sexier. 
So this is the Bloodstained Butterfly. I, I really like this one. I know it's uh, it's different than a lot of the Jallos, and, and its outcome is, it's, I, I thought was clever. I utterly adore the cover, by the way. The cover on this is brilliant. And basically, it's a uh, pretty simple one. A, uh, a young female student, basically, uh, she's a... Uh, she gets murdered in a park and this uh guy he's he's a famous guy i think he's a newscaster or something like that that gets uh accused of her murder and it goes kind of goes back and forth on whether or not he uh he did it and uh if he did if he's going to get away with it or if he didn't and some and he's being set up so but uh interesting film i really like it and i love the ending to that one um i kind of saw it coming but i still think it was a really good film so i have a few different versions of this film obviously uh, but this is the Arrow Zombie Flesh Eaters edition of the film. I'm a huge Lucio Fulci fan. You guys know that. I'm eventually going to do a Fulci video. I'm just working on uh, like watching enough of the Fulci stuff again, enough of the Franco stuff, that I can actually do, formulate a great video on, on both those directors. And again, this is a, a stacked, stacked release. And look at that. Th those are the special features. See, if this was not a live video, thank you, Danuch. Then you would, you'd be seeing, because of that, I might actually get some more Arrow video out of, out of the pile after we go through all this stuff. We're going to get Mondo and everything here. Put that towards the next, I will, actually. Actually, there's something I'm thinking about, so thank you. Next up is a movie that, this kills me every time. Every time there's an Arrow sale, I say, you know what? I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm going to get this movie. Then I come downstairs. I realize I bought this movie a few sales back and I keep forgetting that I bought it. Uh, it's a good film, so I really shouldn't be forgetting that I bought it, but I, I do. And that is Nightmare City. So cool film. I actually, I dug it anyway. I love the artwork on, uh, on Nightmare City. Hey there, Hedge. Welcome, man. But uh, really cool stuff. Some great features on her as well. This is the Berto Lindsay film. As you know, Lindsay's got the big box that coming out from Severin. I'm, I'm stoked for that one. But I like I'll, Amy. It is it's fun. It's it's cheesy fun. Next up is a actually a classic Jallo, but a North American Jallo. And I often forget, but Dress to Kill, Brian De Palma's Dress to Kill is definitely in the Jallo sense. So. Uh, if you want to see the closest thing to a North American Jallo, this this is it. This and curtains. Watch those two as a double feature. But I love De Palma. Uh, I'm a huge fan. It has criterion, but I've already got that Arrow one, so that's why. I'm at the point now where I can't double dip on a lot of things uh, because I got to transport it to Morocco eventually, and that's uh, uh, and I still don't know how the hell that's gonna work. Is Arrow's better than Criterion's? If I had them both, I would do like a kind of a review on both of them. I'm actually gonna be reviewing something that you would never think would be on my channel in the near future. And that is, I'm doing the, uh, I'm actually gonna be going through and reviewing all the streaming services as well. And one of the upcoming ones is gonna be BritBox versus Acorn TV. Uh, because, uh, yeah, because I want to put more on, on my plate. That's, uh, that's the thing I wanna do. You want a really cool, insane film I really don't know. You want a movie that's like just crazy, that has like killer birds and like a, a peck and pie cameo. I'm not joking. A peck and pie cameo. And uh, yeah, John Huston and Mel Ferrer in it. Here you go. The Visitor. It's nuts. I love this film. Uh, I do. I really do actually really like this film. And this is a cool cover. Now, Again, Arrow had a different cover on here, which is this one right here. Which I, I like this better. I like the uh, eye in the sky. Alan Parsons Project, right? For anybody that's from the 80s, they'll remember the song. Uh, but uh, Visitor, I love this. I love the cover. It's, it's an insane film, but I, I dig insane films. You guys know that. Next up is a great... I like this one. It's by Alan Ormsby, the guy that got fired from the set of Popcorn, which was a movie that uh, that he started directing and he got taken off of. And that is Deranged. 
I swear he was. I, you know, I totally forgot that dungeon. I don't have the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers, by the way. I gotta get that. That's like something that's missing in my collection. But again, deranged, excellent film. Robert Blossom is in this. And for a lot of you guys, Robert Blossom is going to be the guy that you remember from Home Alone. I'm not joking. Remember Home Alone? Of course you do. So remember Next Door Neighbor uh, that Kevin is initially like freaked out by. But it turns out he's actually like a really nice guy. He's just missing his family. Uh, spoiler alert for people that haven't seen Home Alone. Uh, also Christine. Yeah, he's in Christine as well. Um, so... Uh, yeah, he's the, he's the next door neighbor. Hey there, Chris. All right. Because I like, and yes, I eventually, I will do a Western video coming up, like a whole, I, I promise. Uh, but this is Django, Prepare a Coffin. I really do like this one. Uh, it's a really fun film. Yep, Sam Peckinpah, the director, he cameoed in a few films. Samuel Fuller did too, by the way. Look for like a big Samuel Fuller role in, in Larry Cohen's Return to Salem's Lot. But Django Prepare Coffin is actually a really cool one. It's got a neat concept. Basically, Django comes into town. Um, oh, yeah, Deranged is the Ed Gein, basically, story. Um, and Django, like, becomes, like, this executioner for this, like, politician. Uh, but what he's doing is he's, like, not really hanging the guys. He's actually making, a, like, a, a band of people to kind of, like, take on the corrupt politician. When I show the Arrow stuff, the one good thing about this is if you want to see diversity in a collection of films, you're, you're getting it with, with Arrow. As you can see, nothing is like the last thing that I, that I showed. Oh, Cemetery Man, Della Morte, Della More. Fantastic film. Thank you, Cubic. I actually plugged it at the beginning of this video for the Criterion sale. It goes around, see? It's karma, man. The Grand Duel is a good one. It's a really good one. Next up is a fantastic film. This may be a canon film, but it's the only reason this movie never won an Oscar is probably because it's a canon film, to be totally honest with you. But this is an excellent film. I've got the, what's it, the Anchor Bay edition of The Ashman Weekend, and I agree that definitely needs a really good, uh, a really good release. This one, it is written by Kira Kurosawa, and... Uh, did you say Danny Trejo? Is this Danny Trejo's first film? Or are we talking about the other one there? Because if the... If it... But damn, okay, I didn't know. Um, or I didn't remember that anyway. But Oh, George, excellent film. Like, it's tense, like, all the way through. And it just it just is so well done. Uh, John Voight, Eric Roberts, Rebecca de Mornier just do an amazing job uh, with that one. Oh, yeah, Ar Arrow did, like, uh, a great edition of this one here. And look at the features on here, too. Like, uh... There's a ton of like features on this release. Sometimes when I see Arrow like do a release now and and it doesn't have as many features on it, I'm, I get surprised. All oh, the stunts in that movie are insane. There's some people that were incredible. Now this one, hey, welcome, man. You're here, better late than never, right? This one I got to talk about because this is this is a favorite of mine, and I think. If I was going to make a film, uh, it, it might be heavily influenced by this film. Um, and that is The Addiction by Abel Ferrer. I, I love this movie. It is a vampire film. It's a very different vampire film. It's gritty and it's very indie and it's black and white. It has a great like small role by, by Christopher Walken who, who definitely like chews the scenery and, and like shines in it. Lily Taylor... Is, you know she's an indie queen and she's incredible in this film here uh, I, I really love this the features on here are amazing as well and they're just, it's just really interesting to like to go into the uh, to just to go into like all the features that are in that are on this film and it doesn't look like there's a lot of features but when you get in there and you realize there's an over an hour long talk about the making of the film and they're like really talking to everybody that was involved in the addiction it's an incredible film and incredible features as well so you'll appreciate it even more all right so next up is to live and die in la as you guys know this is one of my favorite films i also love the soundtrack the song to live and die in la wasn't originally supposed to be on it but it's it's a it's a great song and uh this is the movie that, that would eventually get William Peterson, uh, the, uh, you know, CSI, 
because he, uh, you know, they looked at William Peterson. CBS signed him to a contract, like to a, uh, to like a, a contract, and basically, like every year, like they would pay him money to look at scripts, pilot scripts, and he basically could choose, like, like choose a script or just refuse and go into the next year until he found a script that he liked. The script that he ended up liking was CSI, and history was made. But uh, this is a really fantastic film. I agree, George, man. Oh, Danuch, man, give it another chance. And what's really freaky about this uh, is, and, and think about this, Danuch, because I know you've, you've seen it. Uh, Bill Skarsgård and, and in this movie here, uh, the, no, Bill Skarsgård is not as young. Obviously, he's not in this film. But, uh, God, Willem Dafoe looks, they look almost identical. Uh, when you watch this film, <laughs> it's freaky. It's it's actually legitimately freaky when you see them, um, because a young Willem Dafoe and a young Will, Bill Skarsgård, very similar. Uh, check it out sometime. City of the Living Dead. Again, it it. I don't know. Well, what else do I say about City? It's a great film. I I really enjoy it. That's you know not a lot to say. <laughs> what have you done to Solange? It is, uh, I know. Unfortunately, you know Miracone. He left a solid like legacy behind him, and he lasts. And you know he lived for a a good long time. Uh, but man, did that guy like uh, talk about leaving your imprint, leaving your legacy. Ennio Morricone left his imprint. He left his legacy on on film and uh, on all of us. And it'll. It's just heartbreaking. But if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna come into this world, and you're gonna, and you're eventually gonna go out, and you're gonna leave that type of mark, you, you've, you've done everything right, and he, he definitely did. What have you done to Solange? An incredible film, by the way. This is an early role for Camille Keaton, uh, so um, of course that. She actually plays the titular Solange in the film. It's getting tall. All right, next up is a Nico Masarakis film. As you guys know, I am a huge, huge fan of Nico Masarakis. Uh, I have a lot of his films, but still, there's a lot that I need to get. Uh, what's also cool is got Oliver Reed in this one, and I'm a huge Oliver Reed fan. But not just Oliver Reed, it's also got George Kennedy, and stars Brian Thompson, and it is Hired to Kill. I dig this movie. I like action films, and it's just a fun, cheesy action film. And if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Nico Mastrakis doesn't get the credit he deserves, man. I think more of his work is getting seen now. But, uh, you know, uh, back in the day, he just, like, he did so much great stuff. See, Brian Thompson, I think Brian Thompson dated Nico Mastrakis' daughter. And that's how he ended up in, like, a lot of his films. So if you got the Venier Syndrome uh, title in The Cold of the Night, for instance, that's also got Brian uh, Thompson in it. Um, he's not in the lead role in that one, but he actually he's really good at it. And yeah, and he was an amazing villain in Cobra as well. All right, another like director that has passed away is Larry Cohen, and this is the stuff. If you've never seen the stuff, it's a fantastic film. Michael Moriarty steals the show, which Michael Moriarty tends to do. He just is one of those kind of quirky character actors that uh, that that can do that. Yep, Salone's Cobra has got Brian Thompson on it. This is so fun. I know that like Larry Cohen would go to conventions and he would have like, like uh, actual like plastic containers of the stuff, like not some, but like you know empty plastic containers with the stuff on it. I as I'd always like hoped that I would get to a convention and meet Larry Cohen. He's one of my idols, and uh, and buy one of those plastic containers with the stuff on it, um, and get him to sign it. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen right now. But he was amazing. And check out on Shutter King Cohen which is a, a great uh, documentary. You like, you We can do it like I'm gonna say, Cisco and thing there, Danuch with her. <laughs> with our thoughts on some of these films. Yeah. All right, now here's a classic. I, I, I think everybody can agree on the classicness of this one here. And <laughs> this is Caligula, uh, of course, Tintle Brass, not my favorite Tindall Brass film, but uh, you know it is. You know it's, it's a well-known, great cast. 
Uh, but there were way better tuna brass films than this. A lot of money was put into this one. I would still think it had hurt tuna brass's career to be, to you know, even though there's a guy that was doing like, uh, kind of like artsy, more sexploitation stuff. I would agree. Actually, Larry Cohen, for me, never made a bad film. And I, and I include Full Moon High in that because I actually did dig that one as well. All right, next up is The Fun House. This was put out by Scream Factory as well. But here's when you see one of the not so subtle differences uh, between like the Scream Factory's presentation of a film and Arrow's presentation of the film. So I'm sure many of you have Fun House in your collection. And if you're in North America, you maybe have the the North American Screen Factory edition of Funhouse, and I do as well, but I also have the uh, the UK one, and the artwork. Yeah, the artwork on the UK one is so so much better. Just look at that. Like I'm literally like keeping that up there so you can actually see this, and if you've seen the. Screen Factory edition of, of Fun House and seeing the artwork on it. <sighs> yeah. When people talk about some of the Screen Factory stuff that didn't have the greatest artwork, they're talking about uh, Fun House. And there's also some neat features on here as well. You know, I don't think I've ever read the Dean Koontz novelization, but I really do need to. Here's the... In well, Funhouse, you got to remember too, Amy, to take it in the time that it came. Uh, I always go back when I'm looking, watching Funhouse again. I, I tend to look for the Frankenstein references now because, it, you know, obviously that's such a huge part of the movie Funhouse. Um, so I'll always go back now and look at the Frankenstein references when it comes to, uh, to Funhouse. So if it ever starts to feel long for you when you're watching it, do that. Next up is Porky's. This is a Canadian film done by Bob Clark, of course, who made, well, uh, yeah, my favorite film, Black Christmas. And, of course, he also made, well, he made A Christmas Story and uh, Murder by Decree, some of the greatest films ever made. And he made one of the great, like, uh, basically coming-of-age films of all time, or the sexploitation films, but which was a bit more serious, and that is Porky. So if you've never seen this one, guys, check this out. Let me know what you think of it. I'm not sure how much you're going to like. Kim Cattrall's on it. Uh, her role is interesting. And it's, uh, it's fun. The winner for best and most awkward hot tub sex scene goes to Madman. Now be careful. You don't want to be saying his name. Because if you say it too loud and he hears you, Madman Mars is going to come and get you. So this is a really cool film, by the way. It's a slasher film done in the like the early '80s. Um, great, I agree with you, Danuch. We agree on this one, man. Um, this is a great like feature length, like retrospective documentary on here of Madman, and it's super cool. Um, so if you've never seen it, like definitely check it out. I know Arrow, no Vinegar Syndrome, I think put this out in North America, but I I, I grabbed this one. This one I got from uh, DVD Beaver actually. If you remember, you know the website DVD Beaver that kind of like does reviews, compares movies, that type of stuff. Well, they were selling some stuff at one point. I grabbed some stuff from them. See, I don't see a difference um, in the NTSC, and maybe it's the TV, or maybe it's, or maybe it's just me. The, all of the all of the version of Madman. How many versions of Madman's out there? All right, this is a favorite of mine too. Eaten alive, Tobe Hooper's like follow-up to Texas Chainsaw Massacre obviously wasn't as well regarded uh, yeah I do actually I was a bit I was an Atari's 2600 guy. that's my age range I'm Vinegar Center. Yeah, I was gonna say I knew Vinegar Center did the did one for that so Eaten Alive is a really good film uh, it's got Neville Brand I love Neville Brand it it has a, a very young Robert England in there his name is Buck and I won't say the rest of that line but anybody that's seen the movie knows exactly what I'm talking about. Marilyn Burns, the car lassie. Yeah, four keys. Uh, Mar Marilyn Burns is in this one as well. So she comes back after doing uh, the uh, the last one. And, uh, you know, Texas Chainsaw to do this one here. It's it's a really good film. It's way underrated. And uh, definitely check it out. 
Porky is actually a Canadian classic, but we'll, I'll let you take it for a little bit. But it's Canadian. Proud Canadian boy here, man. Okay, the Zero Buys is an excellent Nico Mastarakis thriller. Uh, it starts out pretty lighthearted. It has the, these uh, guys playing these uh, these war games, uh, you know, with the paintballs and stuff like that. Uh, but it turns into a tense little thriller uh, that is extremely well done. On video, this one's on Video Nasty List. Okay, cool. I got to do a video eventually. I I got a lot of Video Nasties, so uh, and I got the documentaries and stuff. So eventually, I'll get through all the Video Nasties, and we'll do like a video or something on them. Like we'll do a series video or something, video analysis. But uh, if you haven't seen this one, highly, highly underrated. So definitely check it in the zero buys. So if you if there's an arrow sale anywhere and, and you you see this and, and it's inexpensive, I'm not no in no way am I joking. Grab this film. It is way better than you than you think. And that girl right there, that is Kelly Maroney from uh, Ned the Comet and uh, many other films, including. Uh, Chopping mall, so uh, if you want to check it out for her alone. Didn't Marilyn Burns pass away? Did she pass away? I think she, she was in. Uh, I know she was in Texas Chainsaw 3D. Uh, my God, I can't believe that I, that I don't know that. I know, uh, obviously, uh, Gunner did. Maybe she did, but I uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, the new show. The new can confirm it. Uh, yeah, that's sad. Uh, I really like Marilyn Burns. She's yeah, she's the girl that she's the final girl for the original Texas Chainsaw. She would show up in a couple of Texas Chainsaw films actually. All right, so next up is a Joe D'Amato film. Not my favorite Joe D'Amato though, uh, and that is Death Smiles on a Murder. Uh, I got to rewatch this one because uh, when I watched it, I wasn't feeling the best. I was kind of sick, uh, but uh, I'm a huge fan of the of the actor in the film. I'm uh, so. But he didn't seem as weird as he as as he normally is, so that that was a thing as well. But uh, and who else is in this? What's her name again? Ua Olin. I always get her name wrong, but she's in Candy. I remember her for from Candy. I got the uh, the the Kino Lobo release of that one, so she's in this as well. It's a different film. It's unique, and I I actually like it. But uh, I don't feel I've really seen it right. Speaking of Western stuff, it wasn't before, but I am again now. A Pistol for Ringo and the Return of Ringo. This is an incredibly underlooked double feature from Arrow Video. If you got Western stuff, if you have Western taste, you like Westerns, you like spaghetti Westerns, this is a really good pack. Now, what's neat about this, it has two films. It has like almost the same cast in both of these films. But the tonal difference in, from A Pistol for Ringo and the Return of Ringo, extremely different. But don't think that it makes either one of the films lesser. I think they both like really stand up on their own, like on their own. And uh, so much so that my better half preferred the the darker, surprisingly, the darker tone for the return of Ringo, and I preferred the lighter tone from a pistol for Ringo. Is this one a oh man? I didn't know this was limited. Uh, did they lose the rights to this one or something? Hey there, Brian. Ringo about double feature. If this is available and you can get it, I definitely recommend it. <clears throat> All right. We're at some, we're going for a few more Palmas here. It's expensive on Amazon. Check it out on the Arrow's own website or, uh, or maybe even unobstructed. Um, so this is Sisters, the Brian De Palma classic. I had a huge crush on Margot Kidder, as many Canadian boys did, and uh, she, of course, is in this one here. And uh, I'm pretty sure the doctor is William Finley. And again, he has passed away as well. This is an amazingly underrated film. One we could actually probably talk about, didn't it? Next up. I don't have that one actually. I don't have that True Grit se sequel. Obsession. Uh, this is the Palmas version of Vertigo, 
and Brian is going to hate this. Uh, I like this better than Vertigo because it, uh, I don't feel as sad when this movie ends as I do when Vertigo ends. Uh, but yes, I do love Obsession. I love this film. Uh, it's got Cliff Robertson uh, stirring in it. From everything I hear, the guy was really hard to work with. Uh, like in every like every time I like I see a, like a featurette on him uh, in a movie that he's in. He's like super hard to work with, which is a shame. I was a huge fan of the actor. Hellhole. I love Mary Warren Enough and Hellhole. All right. So maybe you, you would like Obsession then. Yes, yeah, so that's the same. Sometimes he just there. Then what do you do, right? I love Peter Sellers too. Again, Fury, another incredible like uh, De Palma film. It's you know it's not one one that he's known more for, but I I really enjoyed this one. You know, Kirk Douglas, John Cassavetes, and uh, oh my God, who's it? I know Amy Irving's in this because she was in Carrie too, but I'm pretty sure Andrew Stevens is the guy in this one, right? Like an early Andrew Stevens role, much like the one he did. Uh, oh God, really going to Morgan Fairchild. All right. I mentioned this one here before, but here it is. Kautiki uh, and uh, the, the Immortal Monster. So you would think, I, I want to get it. Uh, I really want to get it. But this is really good. It's re directed by Ricardo Friedi. The special effects work is directed by Mario Bava. Uh, you would think like a giant like carpet monster, much like the blob, would come off kind of cheesier than it, than it does here. It actually is a really good film, and and there's like a subplot with this other character, and uh, it kind of goes into uh, into Quatermass territory. I like a lot of people say Caltiki is the Italian version of the Blob, um, and, but Caltiki to me is much more of a Quatermass style film. And uh, if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Especially if you've seen the Quatermass Experiment. Um, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about with this film here. All right. I don't... It's different, because I don't compare it to the blob, because I don't see it... Like, there's a blob-like creature in the film. It's done very differently. Uh, so I don't see it like the blob. I see it more like, to be honest with you, uh, Kubrick Lover, I see it more like a... Uh, more like a, If you like the Quatermass films uh, that Hammer put out. So that it's more like that, in my opinion, especially because of the subplot. All right, so there was a series of films called Lemon Popsicle, like Indian Jones, definitely not like Indian Jones. But uh, and it was remade in North America as The Last American Virgin uh, by the same director, actually. So it's a, actually a very uh, very good film. If you've uh, if you've never seen it, it's the one thing to know. You're gonna like this one, Kubrick Lover, because this uh, you want a bit of a sad ending. You want a gut punch in your film. Welcome to the Last American Virgin. I know you're thinking it's gonna be a wacky film and it's gonna be all kinds of teenage hijinks and sex exploitation stuff like that. Oh no, this movie by the end of this film you're going to feel like they punched you in the stomach. Uh, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But again, an incredible one. And it, uh, it does stare Lawrence Monson, of course. If that, that guy kind of looks familiar to you, that's because you saw Friday 13th Part 4. And yes, he's in that one as well. Just uh, put that through your computer and you'll, uh, you'll figure it out and you'll know who he is. All right, so I changed the artwork around this one because I like the artwork on this a lot. Uh, I actually dug this film, too, because, uh, so, you know, Evelyn Stewart, love anything she's in. And that is The Case of Scorpion's Tale. This is, Mar this is a Martino. It is them, the new chat. It's the guy. The guy gets hosed. He does, man. He, he gets screwed over in Last American Virgin. At the end of the film when he's driving, 
like without giving anything away and without saying, when he's just when he's driving in the car, and he's and he's a broken man, and he's literally he's throughout this experience, he he has become a man. Uh, he's not a boy anymore when he leaves when he leaves that party. Yeah, it, it's you know uh, if you haven't seen it, guys, like I know it's got a name like Matt Last American Virgin. People just think oh it's American Pie or something like that. Uh, like it's really not. It, it's it's really a good film. Hey there, Flip. Yeah, it is. It's, it's like it's a, it is a brutal scene, and and you don't like. I don't know if you did, but I did not see that scene coming. Uh, yeah, if you guys haven't seen Last American Virgin, please check it out. All right, so this is uh, there were two volumes done for this one so far. I don't know if they're going to do any more because I don't know how well these sold, but I really dug them. I know AME probably got these. Uh, so this is the Nakatsu Diamond guys, and the first one is Voice. Without a shadow, which is what re the one that really intrigued me, and of course there's Red Pier and the Rambling Guitarist, uh, which I can think was the, there was like a series of those I think. And next up is Nakatsu Diamond Guys Volume Two, and we got Tokyo Mighty Guy, uh, Danger Pays, and Murder Inco Unincorporated, in this one. And it's uh, like a, they're all like a three disc sets, and just I really love them. I thought these were fantastic. I want more featurettes, but like they got the uh, what's that they have? They have like a, you know video discussions on with with Jasper Sharp and some other guys on there, and I love video discussions with Jasper Sharp, so I'm that's I'm all about that. So next up is five dollars for Nagas Moon, and uh, again Mero Bava. It has this has the the Queen of Jal of Jalo in here, Edwidge Fenich, uh, Fenick, and uh, she is incredible. Although Mero Bava did want to have her in this film, actually, he, he did want to hire her. He didn't think she was right for the role. He, uh, but she actually she's a standout in this movie, and uh, it's a fun film. I, it's not Bava's best, but it's definitely a fun film. Yeah, yeah, it's not like I'll agree. I mean, it's definitely not one of his great films. But one of the neat things about this version of it, if you're a Bava fan, there's a documentary on here called the Mass, the Maestro of the Macabre. Uh, so I'm going to put this aside to watch, actually. And it's a documentary, Marabava. Uh, a great little documentary, and I've got to rewatch it, so that's why I put it aside. Actually, Ragnar, I'm not sure if you're here from my last video, but I, th I think it was my last video. I actually showed, I got that here, the Passport Video Edition of it, The 100 Years Horror. Uh, I really love that documentary, by the way. There's like a whole like bunch of, like, you know, usually went 22 minute long. Okay. Last but not least for this section of the arrow stuff before we get into Mondo and all that stuff is the Burbs. And yeah. Who doesn't love the Burbs? It's just such a cool film. Incredible score, incredible film. Um, and it was so underrated for a long time. I mean, it is kind of, now, one thing I gotta say. Uh, and before I go any farther, I have found a Vinegar Cinder movie that I wasn't totally, that kind of, I was in eh on. So I always get asked, what's my least favorite? Vinegar Cinder. And it's still a decent film. And like the, like the interviews on are cool and that as well. And it's got a great cover and a great slip cover. But I don't know, maybe I expected more. Or I expected too much because of the actor that's in the film, um, or the act and the actress. So this is Pale Blood. I'm a gigantic Wings Hauser fan. So like just to put that out there right now. Uh, I was eh on this one, and it's got George Car Caracas in this one. I'm probably getting his name wrong as well from uh, from West Side Story as well, playing like like the vampire character. That's not a giveaway. That that's kind of who he is. And no, it's it's okay. I mean, uh, and you might like it more than I do, but I don't know if I was I expecting more, expecting something different. Uh, Darcy Damas is in this as well, by the way. Uh, so you know, there's a lot of like names in this one here, and for some reason, I'm not sure why, uh, but uh, I guess maybe she was like on the on the set or like on a on another set. There's a sequence in this film, and, and you can't miss her because Sybil Danning is such a physical presence. I do have the Stray Cat rocks box set actually, a great set too. Uh, so, like just randomly, like to show a scene where 
we're you know on the street and Sybil Danning is walking down the road and you, and I kind of expect her to come back in, but it's just like a cameo, a Sybil Danning cameo on this one. So for that alone, it's worth owning it. Uh, but but uh, she's not anywhere else in the film. <clears throat> but I always get asked that question. I don't have the female prisoner scorpion set yet. I really do need to get that though. But I always get asked questions. So what's my least favorite? Of the uh, of the vinegar syndromes, uh, probably that one at this point. Uh, but I, I that that one in Demonite goes goes back and forth. I know I got to get Scorpion set. Are you guys ready for Samando? Are you sure? All right. I have a few Mondo titles. Because I'm a huge fan of Mondo Macabre. <clears throat> I, I love their stuff. And I just finished watching one tonight. And that's what I'm going to talk about actually right away. <clears throat> so, because I'm going to be doing Jess Franco videos. So I'm trying to like watch Jess Franco videos all throughout. Oh, you got more Blu-rays than I got. I got a lot of Mondo Macabre on DVD because when they started, they did a lot of DVDs first, so I got a lot of their stuff. So uh, this is How to Seduce a Virgin with Alice Arno and, uh, of course, uh, Lena Romeo, you see right there. This is excellent. This is an excellent, excellent film and way better than, than, than I actually expected it to be. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, this was done in 1973. In 1973, his output was, was really good, and it was there was and there was a quantity too. He did like 11 movies, at least 11 films. Uh, Just Franco did in 1973. So when you're pumping out that many films uh, during that in that time period, like he pumped out, he did like Countess Perverse, and uh, he did this one, How to Seduce a Virgin. So not only was he pump, bringing a quantity of movies, but at this period in time is also bringing out a quality of films as well and if you've never seen how to seduce a virgin it's not one of his comedies like people assume like because it's probably one of his sexploitation comedies or something like that it's not it's uh it does it it has a bit of a like of the Desaad, like you know because a lot of jess franco stuff is like is like influenced by the because franco was influenced by the writings of the uh in here uh but uh it goes in its own way and it's kind of a bit of a thriller. I won't give too much away, but what I'll say is that there's a couple uh, in the uh, in the film, and they're uh, and the they're like they're evil. They're, they're evil. They have like no morals. And uh, they they find this girl, and uh, like basically like like the titular thing, you know, she's she's uh, supposedly a virgin, and they want to they're thoughts are they're, they're sadists so the thoughts are they're going to seduce her and they're going to kill her but things play differently than you expect and it's uh it's actually a very good film so if you've never seen it as seduce a virgin jess franco i would definitely recommend it i know what you're talking about that's because that one was her. and one of the films on that that blue ray I'm, I'm about to show right now actually and that's sinner the uh, Secret Diary of a Nymphomaniac. Again, a film, when you say, okay, Secret Diary of a Nymphomaniac, that's going to be like a fun film. This is a dark film, actually. Uh, but this is a really, really dark film, from uh, if I remember this one correctly. Also put out in 1973, when I think was a year that Franco was putting out something like soup. He was, was hitting the fence. He was sitting over the fence with, with some of the work that he put out there. i got to rewatch this one. Hey there, Scholar. We're at Mondo right now. But again... Uh, and this one, who starred in this one here? Because what you get, you get like some people that would star. I Ideal Place to Kill is amazing, Bill. Uh, I have the uh, shameless edition of it under the name Oasis of Fear. And I would recommend that film to anybody that's looking at Mondo Macabre stuff. Because uh, their transfer I here is incredible. And it suggests such, such a good film. And not at all what you think when you go and watch it. And I do love the soundtrack. I would love to have ordered the Mondo's two new titles. Uh, I watch, I have no life flip. That's why. <laughs> actually, I grew up watching movies. I, and before I, before I actually grew up watching movies, 
I grew up reading about films and, and books on cinema and stuff like that. And so I was actually a movie fanatic before I was watching films. Uh, that's, that's probably pretty sad, but it's true. Yeah, I would love to have gotten those two uh, mondos today. Uh, I, I just couldn't afford it. But um, yeah, I wanted them. I wanted them bad. And I mean, you would flip, you would get along with my, with my kids because they are, they, that's their, that's their stuff. Anytime they're here, that's what they talk about. Do I remember when they put it in the Mondo Kane box? Yes, I almost picked up a few, uh, about a year ago. Um, and I didn't realize it was kind of out of print. But, uh, all right, so they did the Nakatsu one as well. And this is a, also a non-exploitation. So this is the Sis, Sins of Sister Lucia. I haven't got a chance to watch this one yet, actually. I'm just a huge Nakatsu, and I'm a huge non-exploitation fan. And I did want to make a, a video on non-exploitation. And uh, there's a cool documentary here on, on Japanese cinema as well, so I'll... I'll definitely check that out. I gotta watch these. I gotta get get to watching some of these. But you're ready for some classic stuff. You're ready for some classic stuff. In all seriousness, Barry Prima. If you have never heard the name Barry Prima before, look up Barry Prima. I'm I'm not joking. Um, so he's an Indonesian actor, action actor, and he plays this this character. Uh, Jake Jaka Simba or something or Simba. So it's it's anyway. It's I think character was like a mythological characters in comic books and stuff like that too. So this is the warrior. You've got everyone. I'm I'm so that is so cool, man. And this is the another one. Call sword. Now there's a bunch of these. Unfortunately, these didn't sell well initially when they came out. And these became like cult classics later on. So they didn't put out any other Barry Primas except for these two. And when you see these though, you're gonna to want to have more Barry Prima in your collection because they're just, in, they're fun and they're super insane. And the character can actually like, there's a sequence in one of the films and uh, Ragnar know this, um, where he basically, he's in a, in a fight, in a Kung Fu fight. And he de detaches his body, like body parts <laughs> to attack the guy. So like his foot like comes off his body. Was it a bust? I'm not going to say I'm happy about that, but I kind of am because I wanted to. I'm not happy because I want to no, know. I want my kids to get stuff, so I'm just definitely not happy about it. But I'll, I'll let them know. It's a shame because was there any movies there? Did you get anything, Northern Lights? What Northern Lights is talking about is here in Halifax. Uh, well, in, no, I'm not in Halifax, but in Halifax, uh, there was something called the world's uh, largest uh, yard sale. And uh, it was supposed to be like a, a like a really big deal, but Northern Lights said it's a bit of a bust, so that's a, that's a shame. Well, on the Blu-rays though, what I find is that, well, sometimes they do. Uh, like I'll, I'm going to share one where they did add some stuff, but uh, also the uh, there's the if you get the limited editions, you get the red case and the reversible art cover. Hey, the triple feature, man. It was today, actually, and tomorrow, uh, but I, uh, but that's in, in Halifax. That's four hours' drive away from me, and uh, next up is one of my favorite Mon Macabres. Not even joking, one of my favorites. If you like Mon Macabre and you haven't like hit the like button, hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Definitely not the world's largest yard sale, according to Northern Lights. But uh, this is the Living Corpse or Dracula in Pakistan. This is a Hammer-style Dracula film done in Pakistan, and it's actually pretty cool. Uh, I expected this to be like just super cheesy because there is like a musical number and stuff because you know it's it's filmed done in Pakistan. But uh, it actually, there is some decent atmosphere, some creepiness to the film itself. Uh, super love this film. Um, and there's a great documentary on South Asian horror, which I do recommend you check out if you pick this up. Next Mon Macabre sale, I gotta buy the rest of their stuff that I don't have, because they, they do have some great sales. Okay, now it's a double feature, and this is one of the Dick Randall collection. So Dick Randall's a producer that brought a lot of like uh, movies from other countries over to uh, 
I'll get to that one, Bill. Uh, to uh, to 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 North America, and there, these are two of them right here. Oh, you, so you're are you near Tampa then? Uh, and this is uh, Wing Wing in his Agent Double O's in for your height only. And the second one here is Bruce Lee, you know, one of the Bruce Lee knockoffs in Challenge of the Tiger. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. So it's fun. Like in Challenge of the Tiger, friends, if you said, if you ever thought, you know what I need to see? I need to see naked tennis. Oh, and somebody did say World Large. That was me. Uh, but apparently it's. Uh, it was a misnomer because uh, Northern Lights went there and he said, wasn't that great? All right. More Mondo stuff. So uh, one of these is upstairs, so I do apologize uh, that I don't have both of them here. Uh, the one upstairs is called the Wife Killer, which is a, a one of the, the Greek collection. Uh, classic. They put out a couple of Greek ones. Uh, this was the other one here, Tango of Perversion. Uh, I've mentioned this one on here a few times. If uh, <laughs> the next the next tense one is in Challenge of the Tiger, uh, Tango Perversion is very different. It is a kind of a, a thriller, maybe Greek Jallo sort of thing. Oh yeah, Late Term is amazing. Uh, if you haven't seen this one, definitely check it out. Did you like this one, Ragnar? Because this one like stood out. Because when the good guy is the you know there's not many like movies where you're like you know that necrophiliac is a pretty cool dude but in entangle of perversion he's the good guy well, i'm not joking yeah he's he's the good guy so yeah all right uh one of the first that i picked up uh but uh I gotta rewatch this one, cause I didn't get too into it the first time I saw it. Like, it kind of swept over me, and I and I and I loved the insanity of it, but I just wasn't in the right mood to watch it. So I really gotta watch, go back and watch this one again. This is considered a classic, and that is uh, by the guy that did uh, El Yucarda, which is definitely one that's considered a classic. And this is the Mansion of Madness. So when I initially saw this, I thought it looks beautiful, it, it looks insane, but uh, I'm not, I wasn't really there. Uh, but uh, again, I, uh, and this one was so inspirational to uh, Robert Rodriguez and Quentin Tarantino that a character from uh, one of their films, De Dastoran, was named after this film. And that is Santanico Pandemonium. So, Selma Hayek in, from Dastoran is named after this movie, actually. So, the, the sexy, like, snake charmer stripper character from, uh, from the Titty Twister in, uh, from Dastoran is named after this movie right here, Santanico Pandemonium. That's how big of a geek uh Tarantino and uh like film geek he is and I actually do dig this film actually so um this is one where the the will always say if you ever hear like the movie Ken Russell's The Devils uh, this movie is often like you know it's on it's often said in the same breath as The Devils so if you like The Devils you like San, Santanico Pandemonium whether that's the case for you uh, you know I'd that's that's up to you to decide, but uh, that's uh, that's usually the way it goes. So yeah, if you like the Devil's Cupid Glover, maybe you, you might like this one. Okay, the very, very first. One I think several must start mailing out. Uh, what's today's date? Uh, today's the tenth, right? I wouldn't say any time. Probably for the uh, mid mid next week, or maybe the end of next week. Uh, this is probably the most. Although even though with the stuff happening. Uh, I, I still that still looks to be their most successful sale that they've ever had and uh, and that's after like a lot of people that like just given up on it uh, they still like sold an insane amount of stuff 
so I would say not any time before mid to late next week because I know that the uh, box sets that they're doing too for uh, the Lindsay Carroll Baker box sets have to go out as well. Hey, Jer, welcome, man. Doesn't matter how late you're here, and that's the only thing that counts. I totally agree. Uh, School Ties and With Honors were our two fantastic films. I remember School Ties. All right, right here. Don't Deliver Us From Evil. Brilliant film. Actually, in the day, it was considered, uh, I think it got like, was it Sacrilege or something like that? It got like a uh, ban for blasphemy. Yeah, ban for blasphemy. Uh, I don't really think it was uh, that blasphemous, actually. But, uh, you know, back in the day, right? A lot of people had huge crush on Myra Kelly. She was cute, man. She still is, actually. But this was the first Mount Macabre I ever got. This was before I knew what they were. I was actually at a... Uh, uh, I was at a Kijiji, basically Kijiji ad, I this guy was selling these films, and I found this one in the middle of a bunch of other, like, just regular films, and I picked up and I grabbed it, and I actually utterly adored this film. So if you've never seen this one, definitely a fun watch. Well, I'm not sure about fun, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, the Indonesian films are crazy, and they're crazy in a good way. And nothing says crazy or crazy insane Indonesian film that's going to be a blast more than Mystics and Bali. So... Yes, you've all heard of it. You've all seen like either a meme or a picture or a gif of it. This is the one with the head that's floating around and as a, you know, kind of a vampire. And like, as you can see, part of her, her body, her, her, her you know, her lungs and stuff are, uh, are, are, out, are out of her as well. You got on Blu-ray, you got Santa Pandemonium. You really like Santa, Santanica Pandemonium. Insane film, extremely fun film. If you've never seen an Indonesian film, by the way, you really got to get into that because they have some really, really cool stuff. And uh, this is well known. If you watch a lot of these, like uh, YouTubers, like Brandon Tenold or or many of the other guys that do like the uh, kind of like the kind of make the bad movie stuff, they'll talk about this one. I got my invites right away, uh, Dave. Like that's the thing. My invites. Does that mean my, my stuff's going out? Because my invites was like almost immediate. Uh, as soon as I had my stuff paid for it, the main voices were there. So that was, uh, I lucked out that way. <clears throat> I wouldn't say they're like Bollywood films because you're not going to like, uh, not a lot of music and stuff like that. Not, not, and they're not like three or four hours long. But uh, there's, they, have, they, have, they have some really cool stuff. And some really insane stuff too. Like this one right here, Lady Terminator. I know what you're thinking. If you've never seen this movie... Uh, you're going to look at this movie and you think, wow, this is a movie that's just as, just a ripoff of like of Terminator with as a girl. But uh, in actuality, <laughs> uh, it's about a woman that gets uh, possessed by uh, what's it, the Queen of yeah, the Queen of the South Sea. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to tell you what happens, <laughs> but but just see it. Just, uh, just see this film. It's not what you think it is. So, Lady Terminator, not at all what you think the movie is. That's, that's the best way to, to put it. It's nothing like Terminator. <laughs> okay, another great one, and this is actually uh, one of the few UK ones they put out, and that's Don't Open Till Christmas. Uh, really cool, like 52 minute making of documentary on here as well. Uh, Edmund Pr Prudhomme is in this one. And Edmund Perdom is, is the guy that is in, like, one of my favorite Severn films that was put out called Absurd, which I recommend to all you guys before the sale. Hey there, Wolf. We're doing Mondo. We're almost, well, we're getting to the Mondo Blu-rays next, and then uh, we're going to do some Hammer stuff, too. But actually a really cool one. And, uh, and if you like, like, the Christmas horror, definitely check it out. And last but not least, this one was got to me by a certain good friend of mine who's here. And that is Virgins from Hell. And I love this movie. Uh, I've watched this around like four times. Uh, not even lying. So this is like an Indonesian one too. But it's a really fun one. Uh, and what's really neat is there are 70 freaking minutes of trailers. So if you've never bought an Indonesian like film before and you can get your hands on Virgin from Hell, grab this one first because it not only are you going to get a really cool film, and this is a really fun film by the way, uh, but you're also going to get a second disc which is going to have 70 freaking minutes 
of trailers uh, of Indonesian films. And that will get you stuck on that. So there you go, Triple Feature Man. This is a trailer compilation uh, and a really cool film too. So I also got some Blu-rays here. I don't have like a, a huge amount of Blu-rays from, uh, from this company, uh, which is a shame. I just got a handful. But uh, every one I got, I actually I, I do utterly adore. So we'll go into one at a time. And the, uh, I think this is the first, yeah, this is the first one I got from them. And this is the uh, Der Fan, The Fan. It is an extremely good film. I recommend it. it it's a hard, uh, it can be a bit of a hard watch. Uh, but I actually adore this film. And it's, uh, it, you know, it's leisurely paced. But it really works up to where it's going. And uh, it's a bit of a hard hit. Kubrick Lover, you, if you haven't seen this one, I'm pretty sure you would like this one. And so this is a, uh, it's a German film. And basically there's this teenager named Simone. And she's a huge fan. She's the biggest fan ever of this, uh, of this pop star. And she decides to run away from home and she wants to go and meet him. And uh, that's all I'm going to tell you. It's a really good film. Brian, if you don't have this one, really, this is a really good one. And uh, I watched it a few times. My better half, who doesn't like normally watch horror films or doesn't, doesn't really like horror, she watched this one with me. And she loved it too. And that actually kind of kind of surprised me. But it's actually a really good film. Next up is a, uh, is a South Korean one. And... Uh, What I put more into getting like more more titles from the label or upgrading existing ones, uh, more titles from the label. Uh, like uh, now, that being said, the stuff that they put out on Blu-ray, uh, I don't have on DVD, so it's that's that's an easy one for me to say. But uh, I I prefer to have more titles rather than than upgrading uh, a title, and and the reason for that is you know I just I just want to see more more cinema, and I'm okay with DVDs. Like w me and my better half talked that I about like. TV on DVD and he said and we don't need to get a blu-ray for TV for instance uh, for TV shows because we started collecting TV shows on DVD so oh, I'm sure they'll have it it's a great one Brian next up is suddenly in the dark South Korean one uh, this is a really fun one I actually like this film um, what's neat too is there's like a uh, Korean like covers like horror covers uh, like you know the same me uh, like featurette on here which is actually kind of cool But I actually dug this. We actually were looking at like some Criterion. We couldn't afford to get any this time around. But we wanted to buy. We both like. Me and my better half both love Criterion. But we, we can rarely afford to get any. Uh, because you know. There's other stuff that we pick up. Or it just comes at the wrong time. And so she was doing a list herself. Uh, and on Barnes and & Noble. And uh, she did up like a Criterion list. The ones that she wanted. She said I can't get any now. But I'll, I'll do up a list to, uh, for next time. And uh, yeah, it was it was we had a we had, we had a blast. With it. Do you know what you're getting yet? What two criterions you're getting? So here's a, like a Jello, but it's a it's a tamer Jello, but I actually dig it. And uh, the fox with the velvet tail. Do you want to say, or are you going to leave it to you for your channel? I'd like to reveal there. And now a lot of these here, you see with the blue covers, like these, and a lot of these initially. Had limited edition. Oh, this is my collection, Jr. Uh, definitely not a hobby right now. I saw. I think I saw some of yours on like online, right? Uh, what was some of her picks? Uh, she uh, she's a huge like Akira Kurosawa fan, uh, and like she liked the Chaplin stuff. So there was like stuff there that she that she wanted there was there was like there was some definitely some stuff I mean, war of the worlds we're both huge science fiction fans uh and uh so yeah that type of stuff the older horror stuff that that comes out phantom carriage is one shit that she uh, really wanted as well so we do have like some some similar taste when it comes to that so fox with velvet tail i wish i could say i remember this one better but i don't uh i gotta do a rewatch on this one this is like in 1971 i gotta bring this upstairs actually 
Yeah, this one's going upstairs with me too. The Grand FM looks like she's 12, really? All right, next up is the only limited edition one that I got. And it's a shame because I love their limited editions. Uh, but uh, I love this film. And uh, yeah, I, I had to have this one. And this is Symptoms. So if you've never seen Symptoms, it's a Jose Larraz film. And it is a really good film. Angela Pleasance is in this. And uh, Angela Pleasance looks amazingly like her dad, actually. But what's super cool about this limited edition one, uh, yeah, that was the score, is that, and I know exactly what he's talking about, is this here comes with a bonus disc, right? And so the way it is done, a lot of people are like, what's the CD? It's the score. Her dad is Donald Pleasance, yeah. Uh, but... Uh, they acted together in From Beyond the Grave, the uh, anthology. So uh, this is actually a, a, a basic uh, documentary, Laraz on Laraz. So if you're a huge Jose Laraz fan, uh, yeah, definitely check this out. And like uh, them, there's also a, a booklet in there as well. Actually, it's a very well-written booklet, too. And you can see what's by. Yes, it is by Sam Deegan. So... Yeah, and as you guys know, I'm a huge, huge fan of Sam Deegan um, on here. Like Sam Deegan, Rachel Nesbitt, Heather Drain, uh, Kate, Kat Ellinger. But, again, and an, an incredible film. Let's see if they got a picture of, like, Angela Pleasance here. Such, she looks so much like her dad. I'm like, in all seriousness, like, look, look right here. Does she not look like Donald Pleasance? Isn't that insane? It's definitely a cool one. If this is one where the limited edition lasted for a long time, way longer than it should have. Uh, I know some people like in the UK probably grabbed the UK edition of this one. Uh, oh, trust me, man. If you're in the film, you're really going to see the resemblance. <clears throat> Next up is one of my favorite, favorite Lucio Fulci giallos, and that is a lizard and lizard and a woman's skin. This is a great addition to this one here. I, yeah. Oh, the symptom one was a red case. Yeah, this is this one. This green case was actually done by uh, someone else. Uh, this wasn't initially in a green case. But I think it looks good in a green case, don't you? A uh, ton of features on here. I uh, interviewed with Steve Thrower. He's uh, interviewed on a lot of these ones here. Hey there, Jason. Welcome, man. Oh, she's way sexier than Thinking Pop, man. Uh, this is for in the, for in the Balkan. And, uh, man, yeah. Love me some for in the Balkan, man. She broke my heart in Don't Torture Duckling, though. Have I seen Lifeboat? Hitchcock classic, yeah. Uh, I actually love that film. I don't own it, though, which is, a, is, is surprising for me, but I, I don't own it. All right. Oh, another Jess Franco film that i got to watch. I think this one's upstairs, I actually, watch now. Hey there, Michael. Welcome, man. And this is Night Has a Thousand Desires, and that is the beautiful Lena Romay. I was, like many guys, I was in love with Lena Romay. Uh, Jess Franco was, was a lucky man. Um... Uh, she was uh she has this like very unique look about her too and uh she plays these like really quirky characters and uh, and plays them really well in the one that i watched tonight uh she played like a mute uh girl and she and just just an odd character and she's just like in the background and she's just doing these like these unusual things but it just suits her uh the way she's playing the character extremely well like the like there's something wrong upstairs with the character. She's like, she's got lipstick and she's just like taking it and like she's like just bringing it across her face and it, it's how it cracks. It, it, it was really cool anyway. So not, not in this one though. This is Night of the Thousand Desires. Uh, it is a uh, Jess Franco Blu-ray that they put out. There is the beautiful Lena Romay, in my opinion anyway. And my most recent buy from Mondo Macabre is this one and I'm so excited that I got it. I love the cover art on this one, and I do love this film. 
Well, she's before Diane Ladd, so there. She beat her, because that was in 1973. But yeah, kind of similar. The Beast with the Magic and the Magic Shore. This is Paul Nashi. I'm a huge Paul Nashi fan, especially his werewolf films. And uh, this is a great one right here. This was one of the ones that he did in Japan. It's done in 1985. Uh, and I super, super dig this film. His werewolves were bloody. Now I'm going to take a quick drink before I go on and do the hammer portion of this video. Oh my god. Because <clears throat> I got some really cool hammer stuff to show you guys. Like box sets and everything. Including one of the box sets I'm most proud to own. <clears throat> Like I promise you guys, when I'm doing a collection video here, especially from now on out, I'm not, uh, I, from here on out, for the last few videos, you're going to notice what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making sure that there's a wide variety of stuff so that, oh, there's some indicator stuff here, Brian. Uh, but we'll start with the regular stuff first and we'll work our way to the indicator stuff. So we'll start with a couple of DVDs and we'll go into all the Blu-rays. It's mostly Blu-rays and uh, some other stuff as well. It's hammer time. Stop. Okay, so uh, again, one that uh, that's not open because me and my better half both have this one. The original George of the Jungle. George, George, George of the Jungle. The cartoon. I love the cartoon. Obviously, I know the theme song. Okay, so this was a double feature was put out called Taste of... Oh, I love Taz Records. I got to go there next time I'm up there. Do they still have their, uh, their laser disc section? Because their lasers are super cheap, by the way. Curse of Frankenstein and Taste of Blood Dracula. Taste of Blood is one of my favorite Dracula films, by the way. i got to upgrade this on the Blu-ray. Next up is one that I also need to upgrade to Blu-ray. i got a few Amicus titles. Uh, they have some great stuff, too. And uh, this is Dracula AD 72, which I love the artwork for. And out of the two, like modern day Dracula ones done, done by Hammer. There's this one and Satanic Rites. Uh, honestly, uh, I like this better than Satanic Rites by far. Best read a Hayworth film. I, I really don't know, to be honest with you. I got to read a Hayworth like set here too, um, but I don't know if it has your best films on it. All right, now let's get into some of the, well, let's do these two first because uh, they're, they're kind of neat. So there was a company called Millennium, and they were bought out by another company. But when they initially started, uh, they were going to be doing like a hammer, and they're going to be putting in some really, really cool hammer stuff. So if you can ever get your hands on these, I do recommend picking them up, even if you got the Scream Factor editions. So this is Frankenstein Created Woman. This is the Millennium edition, and you're going to see why it, it's different. Uh, it has a commentary. It's got like Frank Stein Curve One trailer, two World of Hammer episodes on here, and the Hammer Glamour documentary. But that's not all. Uh, no, that's definitely not all. So you open it up and you see this, all right? And you get these here. <laughs> fantastic what fantastic like presentation and by the way these look these look incredible and hammer glamours are really cool like a uh, documentary on hammer uh, on the hammer actresses and that's not the only one there's another one Dracula Prince of Darkness, which is one of my favorite like Drac Dracula films. So yeah, I will show you guys. So again, it opens up. It has the, and I love the like the way they could just put in like a plain thing, but but or they could have just put it there. Never gave you an envelope at all, but they go with an envelope too. So we're gonna open up this one here. I'll show you the cards on the inside. 
So there is Dracula, Prince of Darkness. All the big scenes near the end. Amy, keep an eye out. I'll let you know when I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it on a podcast, actually, uh, talking about a Hammer film. They're very different. I mean, like, I'd one kind of one goes with the other. It's like asking what I like better, peanut butter or chocolate. Uh, they complement each other so well. I like them both. I'm more, I think, probably like Peter. Uh, I'm more of a Peter Cushing guy because as if uh, acting-wise, uh, I, I would have seen myself as more of a Peter Cushing guy. I love the fact that he's such an active actor. Okay, that is definitely not. Okay, here's a nun hammer one thrown in for good measure because I, I just managed to bring it over by accident. But there's Dead of Night. Excellent film. Not a hammer one, though. Okay. So I'll do these here. Uh, synapse ones first. I'm going to have to cover them because they have like... Uh... Hey there, Al. So... This is Hands of the Ripper, which I really like. And uh, I'm covering the nudity because there was like a, a, a nudity free cover. Of course, I'll find the nudity side of it. Next up is again. All right, here we do this right. Oh, Crack it. Countess Dracula. Of course, with Ingrid Pitt. The classic and excellent, excellent Vampire Circus, which if you have not seen this one, really check it out. And if you're a Doctor Who fan, for instance, Layla Ward is in this, and she is super cute. She's the one who played Romana too in Doctor Who. And a really good release with amazing special features that are exclusive. Uh, do I own movies that bore me? A couple, uh, to be honest with you. But I never get rid of films. Uh, so even uh, like I'll always give them another chance. Twins of Evil, great release, and it has some ex Blu-ray exclusives on here. Uh, it has a great like uh, like eighty-four minute documentary. They they are covered. I I do usually turn them around uh, to the nude side because that's me because I'm a, like a five year old. Now before I get into the other ones, uh, somebody asked me recently. A good place to start with Hammer, and uh, and I mentioned this to Cinema Dave when he was here, um, but uh, this is one of the box sets to start with if you, if, you, if you like Hammer. It's the Hammer Horror 8 film collection, and it has Brides of Dracula, The Curse of the Werewolf, Night Creatures, The Phantom of the Opera, Paranoia, Kiss the Vampire, Nightmare, and Evil Frankenstein. So again, just some incredible, like, well-done films. Uh, this was originally in a DVD box set, but it, I upgraded to the Blu-ray because Brides of Dracula is the bomb, man. When Snaps releasing the deluxe soon, hopefully, because Snaps needs a new good release out there, man. <clears throat> All right, so I got some Lionsgate and some Final Cut stuff here. I'll do the Final Cut stuff first. Uh, so this is Herbert Lom in Phantom of the Opera. Good story behind this one, actually. So uh, definitely worth uh, worth checking out. He wasn't the original person who was supposed to star in that. He was that was originally supposed to be Cary Grant, and uh, yeah, there's a good story behind that. This is Kiss of the Vampire. I love this movie. Uh, this was initially put out by, uh, no, well, this was recently put out by, or it's coming up by Screen Factor if it's not out already. Hey, welcome back, Chris. And next up is the classic Captain Clegg with Peter Cushing. And I, I like these, more of an adventure one. And what did I do with the other one? Oh, I left it upstairs. I knew I did. So I got the Mummy uh, Lionsgate edition. It's a three-disc edition with an extra film on it. That's upstairs. I meant to bring it downstairs. Uh, I was watching it because I'm because of a, a podcast I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on. And also I have Dracula, which is also known in North America as Horror of Dracula. Again, again you can see this is a, a three-disc set. 
And just to kind of let you know the, what kind of the work and stuff they put into these. Um, so there is the BFI 2007 restoration of the film. Uh, there's the Hammer 2012 restoration of the film. And uh, there's uh, there's not a commentary and uh, special, you know, and then special features wise, by the way. Dracula Reborn, a documentary on the film. Uh, Resurrecting Dracula, again, a, a documentary on the restoration. Censoring Dracula, basically a new documentary on the original film cuts that he had to make to get it past the British Board of Film censors. The Demon Lover, Christopher Frailing and Dracula. All four surviving Japanese reels, which shows the uncut, like, uh, version of Dracula. Uh, the World of Hammer, Dracula and the Undead. Uh, Janina Fay Reed Stoker at the Vault Festival. Uh, Stills Gallery of over 100 restored and rare images. The original shooting script is, is on here to download. And a booklet, which you can download as well. That was your first hammer? It was the Horror Dracula? And it's like a Blu-ray and a 2D DVD set. Next up is Curse of Frankenstein. And again, this one is loaded as well. Uh, it's called a double play. We'll have like a Blu-ray and, and two DVDs on there. And this one includes an actual extra film on here called Four-Sided Triangle. And a the TV pilot that Universal did with Hammer called uh, Tales of Frankenstein. Uh, that's on here too. So this one has a bonus film and a TV pilot uh, as well. So really, really good release. You just gained super cool points. Amy Cascaris is one of my favorite Dracula films of all time. And people t tend to hate on it. I've been kicked off of hammer boards for saying that I like Scars of Dracula. So you rock, dude. Yep. Because it's it, it always gets the hate. It always gets hate, man. And I love the movie Scars. I think it's a fantastic Dracula film. So first up in the Indicator series is volume one and it is the fear warning so we got like main the maniac the gorgon fanatic and the curse of the mummy's tomb i have number 5138 of 6000 now we'll actually we'll take them out so you guys can see the artwork do that really quickly <clears throat> i love them i love Ma maniac it's a great current matthews film it's some people find it a little bit too uh too ironic too violent and as a but it's actually a really good like Dracula film uh, the Gorgon and I do love this one here I love the Gorgon actually Barbara Shelley doing some really cool work there and the best art out of all these here is the Curse of the Mummy's Tomb he looks almost like King Kong there the way he's holding the girl but it is actually a fun film I do like this film and last but definitely not least is Stephanie Powers and Tallulah Bankhead in uh, in Fanatic. Oh yeah, uh, he's uh, he plays what's his name Clove or something like that. And uh, like he gets beaten badly in Scars, man. He gets whipped the crap out of by Dracula. Oh yeah, George, this is this is a a, a treasured piece in my collection, much like those uh, those Harryhausen sets in Sinbad. <clears throat> I think some people just kind of had to get over themselves for that because it's such a fun film. Indicator is amazing box sets, Jason. George here has pretty much all the, almost every Indicator set right now, and a lot of Indicator releases. He's got an amazing collection of them. So this is volume two. This is Criminal intent there's the snorkel which is actually an excellent one the full treatment really good film never take candy's sweets from a stranger again excellent and cash on demand which is usually the one that people love the most i like never take sweets from a stranger it's just you know it's a darker film but i actually do like it and again we'll see the artwork so there's cash on demand which actually has really cool artwork by the way the full treatment never take sweets from a stranger and the snorkel. Snorkel is way better than it looks, by the way. A simple but clever premise. Very much in the lines of like movies like I Saw What You Did. All right, volume three. That I was surprised never got any. <laughs> so this is, that has the Camp on Blood Island, 
Uh, yesterday's anime, that's the two war ones, and it's got uh, Stranglers of Bombay and the Terrors, Terror of the Tongs. I really love Terror of the Tongs and Stranglers of Bombay. Those are my two favorite. There's the artwork. This is Christopher Lee, by the way. Don't judge. It was a different era. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that is Christopher Lee. So there is Terror of the Tongs right there. Stranglers of, Bombe of Bombay. Uh, by the way, if you're a fan of like uh, of like horror films, by the way, Guy Roth from Puppet Master is in this one. And if you're a fan of uh, of Doctor Who, uh, the Master is in this one here. I think he's in both of these actually. But I know he's in he's in this one. The Master, the original Master. There it says, and I love the artwork in this one. Yesterday's anime. Look how amazing this artwork is. And. The camp on Blood Island, yeah. Like most of most of their releases are are region free, and they usually say when they're not region free. A gangster film collection. Actually, I, could, I probably could do that because I do have a few gangster releases here. Actually, not really, because the snorkel does. Is this really like uh, it? It is exactly what it says. It is. It like the snorkel is like being used for a reason. Roger Delgado, thank you, Bill. I forgot the name for a second, which is horrible for me being a being a huge a Doctor Who fan. So this is Volume Four. I don't have Volume Five yet, by the way, guys. Just to let you know. The Revenge of Frankenstein, uh, Two Face of Doctor Jekyll, Taste of Fear, and The Dam is in here. Oh no! Oh, definitely not. The Eric Roberts is the worst master. <laughs> Again, I'll show the artwork here because I do love the artwork in this. Taste of Fear is called Scream of Fear here in North America, by the way. Um, so this is Revenge of Frankenstein. The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll. Taste of Fear, which is again called Scream of Fear here in North America. And The Damned. This is a really cool set. What's really neat about this one, and George will know this, is that The Damned actually is a... a Unlike the rest of them, is a two disc set with uh, some. Look, a uh, young Oliver Reed there, too. Love Oliver Reed. Actually, I did like do some arrow video. You, you went here and did the arrow, son? Uh, actually, I did like a bunch of arrow stuff at the beginning of this video. You might want to go back and watch that afterwards. Your favorite is volume four? I don't know what my favorite is. I, I really don't. I got one more hammer thing to show you guys, and it's one I'm super proud of. And it's this. This is the hammer collection. So it's a 21 disc set with 20 hammer films. And it's a... Uh, it's cool. So you open it up like this, and then it comes open like this here. So we're gonna take it out and we're gonna look at it. So first off, there is a a booklet that gives you like the like the features and the and a write up on the films and just lets you know the uh, like the different films that are there. Uh, so there's just like a sample right there. The neat thing about this is it's it also has like a wide variety of films, so it's not all horror, it's not all action. It's it's a good combination. So this are these are some Hammer postcards. This is Dracula Prince of Darkness. This is Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. Quater Mass in the Pit. It's a UK box set. Um, the a Reptile. Frankenstein Created Woman. Postcard there, and this is one million years BC with the beautiful Raquel Welsh. So I'll show you the the way they're done. So they're done in in four books, and they come like this. It is DVD. Uh, there was a, a Australian Blu-ray that was out that had a few of them. Uh, but the neat thing about this is, if you like, these are really good editions of these films. And if you wanted, let's say, you don't have like a region-free player, but you got a computer or you can like it's easier to get DVDs to go region free. Uh, this is a good one. 
because I'm not quite sure if these are Riesling or not. But here, so here's the first one right here. You can see Rasputin on the front, and you can see the Ursula Anders on, the, on there, so it gives you an idea. So first off, you have she. Then there's the nanny with Betty Davis. Followed by Dracula, Prince of Darkness. The classic Plague of the Zombies. And Rasputin, the Mad Monk. Now on the inside cover here, it has like information. So basically, it'll tell you that uh, the nanny has a feature length audio commentary with Jimmy Sangster. And Dracula, Prince of Darkness has a 57 minute documentary called The Many Faces of Christopher Lee. Now we get to volume two, and we got the beautiful Raquel Welsh on there, and the not so beautiful reptile. So here we got the movie The Reptile. Great makeup effects on the reptile, by the way. Next is The Witches, Joan Fontaine, One Million Years BC. The Viking Queen. I actually like the Viking Queen. A lot of people didn't like that. And Frankenstein Created Woman. As you, as you know, I've got the Blu-ray of this one too. Uh, I don't know, actually. I, I never check on that. I'm never a person that looks back to see how much of a, that, uh, that something's worth. Usually people just come on here and tell me. Um, so this one here, like, uh, not a lot of features on, on this one here. Uh, just really the films and that. But uh, One Million Years BC does have an interview with Raquel Welsh. And an interview with Ray Harryhausen as well. So that's actually pretty cool. So let's get into book three. I'm pretty sure that's from Vengeance, right? Yeah. So this is from Vengeance of She. Not, uh, not as good sequel. And this is from Quater Mass and Pit. That is Andrew Keir, who's going to be in a few vampire, a few uh, Hammer films. So it starts off with Quater Mass and the Pit, which I, a film I love, by the way. Vengeance of She, a film I can watch. The Devil Rides Out, a highly underrated film. Really like this one. Prehistoric Women, I dig it. And uh, Scars of Dracula. So there you go. So this is our second Dracula film. Feature wise on here, by the way, we have uh, not a lot actually. Well, yes, we do actually. We got a Full length commentary by Roy Ward Baker and Chris Lee on Scars of Dracula, which is incredible. I'm pretty sure that's for Frank Stein, right? Yep. So on, on here we have David Prowse, of course, uh, from uh, Star Wars fame, and that is uh, from Horror Frankenstein. My dad definitely introduced me to Hammer. And this is uh, Natasha Kinski and To the Devil a Daughter. He was Darth Vader. So we have Horror Frankenstein, which I think is extremely underrated, by the way. Next up is Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. The only one I don't have is the Mummy Shroud, actually. Straight Until Morning, one of my favorite Hammer like psychological thrillers. Fear in the Night with Christopher Lee. Sorry, with Peter Cushing. And Demons of the Mind, which is excellent. And one more, though. And that is To the Devil a Daughter. So, feature wise, this one has like a lot more features on this one. Horror Frank Sang gets an idol commentary with Jimmy Sangster in an interview with Veronica Carlson. <clears throat> uh, Blood from the Mummy's Tomb gets an interview with Valerie Valer Leone, Christopher Wigging, and along with radio spots. Straight into Morning gets an, it gets an idol commentary with, with Rita Tushingham. Uh, Fear in the Night gets a commentary with Jimmy Sangster. Deems of the Mind gets a, a, a commentary with Peter Sykes, Christopher Wicking, and Virginia Withrow. And one of the great features on here is To the Devil of the Daughter gets To the Devil of the Daughter, To the Devil of the Death of Hammer, which, because uh, Devil of the Daughter was the last Hammer film uh, that, uh, that, that was made. And, the, and the, there's a documentary on the, on the last film and, uh, and, you know, The End of Hammer. I'm glad you got in a hammer. That actually excites me, man. Anytime I can, I can get somebody to, to like, get stoked about a company. 
that I'm excited about that always makes me happy. And you can see on the, on the end of it, there's like this little thing to put it in. So that, that's, do you hammer marathon? Excellent. See, these are the things that keep me making these videos. And it's one of the things that I'm super stoked about when it comes to uh, doing my uh, teaching down the road uh, is that I'm hoping that I'm going to, that I can reach some people out there and get them to like, like get a love for uh, for certain cinema. Wow. Uh, we've gone through Arrow and Mondo and Hammer. I told you, you see, there's a reason I was leaving Hammer f for last. Uh, because of that box set in particular. Uh, it's one of the prides of my collection, to be honest with you. And it's one that I am super stoked about. Pick up some buys. I'm, uh, hopefully those are blind buys are ones that you liked. Um, I'm pretty good when it comes to... I've been pretty lucky when it comes to blind buys from companies. The good thing if you pick up something from like a vinegar syndrome or a severin and you really really don't like it there's always there's always like a way to to grab that back lady vanish was the final hammer film was it really because <clears throat> was that after to the devil daughter or was it that to the to, to devil daughter was like the last like shot hammer film Oh, Criterion's coming. It does some great blind buys. But yeah, they talk about that. And how much, like, Peter Cushing wanted... Like, I'm sorry. How yeah, much Chris Filley wanted to do more of the uh, of the Wheatley work, like, and uh, made it to... Uh, made into films. All right. So, it's that time again. I was initially thinking I was going to do, like, I, I would grab, like, my John Wayne box sets or something like that and add that onto this video to just put a little bonus here at the end. But I don't think I can top for tonight anyway uh, the, the hammer box set to, to end on. I'd say Deanth is what I was showing release date for mine as well. Uh, and I'm just, is you know one of the crazy things is I'm I, I'm going back between like do I want the Gamma one right away, or do I do I want to get all the Ultraman sets? Don't laugh, but uh, I'm a huge Takatsu fan, so that's like a and Sentai fan, so that's a big deal for me. Uh, anyway, I am Aaron. This is my movie library. You can see like a whole blank space. There are five to six one coming out right now. Uh, and they are done in a way that they, that each of this, their, the sides makes up a mural. Uh, check out Serial at Midnight's video on Ultraman because he's done a really good video on the, on, on those sets. And he's the one that sold me on them. You are the call to cinema. You guys rock. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Uh, you guys have been awesome. And thank you for the super chat because it's getting me a little bit closer to being able to get, maybe get a movie that I want to get for the channel. <laughs> so have a great night, guys. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot for coming in. And uh, hit the like button on the way out. I will see you again soon. Have a great day. It is time for tea.